Hi, everybody. This is Barry Carter, also known as Barry 3D from the Iconist Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. I am over here at the Hero Fest, and I'm sitting with... Me. He's sitting with me. Uh, Kalman Andrushovsky. Now, this looks like a mouthful, I know. Four consonants, Eastern European name. It's tricky, but if you say four words you all know how to say, you can say my name. And rush off ski. Easy peasy. Easy peasy ski, you might say. <laughs> I love it. So I'm here answering questions, and my question is, we just did our podcast on Captain Canuck. I know you've done some work on Captain Canuck. So first, how did you come across on getting on that project? What was your feel on it? Uh, and let's start with that. Uh, yeah, I've done a little bit of Captain Canuck in my career. Uh, how did I get into it? Well, there's a weird precursor when I was doing covers for a DC uh, sci-fi series called Rebels. The interior artist was Claude St. Alban, who worked on Captain Canuck. And when the entire creative staff of Captain Canuck, this is going back now uh, a few years, so a little background on Captain Canuck. You guys probably covered this, but he was, he was uh, created in 1975 by Richard Comley. And uh, Richard self-published his comics out of Canada until about 1981. And he used a really sophisticated coloring process that Marvel didn't even get into until the 90s. He, he really splurged on that. So, Captain Canuck and I were both created in the same year. It was sort of destiny that we would work together. So, getting back to my story, I was doing covers on Rebels, and when Richard, his co-creators, were inducted into the Joe Schuster Hall of Fame, they asked me to introduce them because I had this tenuous connection because I worked, I did covers on a, a book one of them was drawing. So, if you look on YouTube and go deep, you might find a me on stage talking at length about Captain Canuck five years before I ever worked on it. But it was an interesting uh, harbinger of what was to come. Um, one of my studio mates asked me if I was interested in doing a character design gig because they had been asked, but they were exclusive and they couldn't do it. And I said, sure. And then I found out it was Captain Canuck, and I kind of lost my mind. Um, I didn't read Captain Canuck comics when I was a kid, but all my friends had them, and I saw them everywhere, and I knew of Captain Canuck. And I loved the design of the character and when Guardian came along uh, who technically is kind of a Captain Canuck analog if you know I guess these guys talked about it on the show already so I'm not going to get into that but uh, yeah the Canadian flag is a costume this was very compelling to me I only know how to draw maple leaf from memory because to me learning how to draw maple leaf was learning how to draw the bat symbol and it was thanks to characters like Captain Canuck and Guardian that that was a thing for my very distractible uh, grade school mind so it started off as a character design gig. Somebody wanted to reboot Captain Canuck and make animated web series. And so I did. We redesigned the costume. Uh, you guys probably showed it. Um, and that was, at first, that's all it was. Um, and I didn't, I'm not in animation. I did some character designs for the show. I just redesigned everybody for the animation. And then one day the guys had a meeting with me and they were like, we want to do comics. And I was like, cool, okay. They're like, do you want to draw it? And I was like, no. <laughs> I'm retired from drawing interiors. They're too hard. I'm a cover artist now. What I really want to do is write. Can I write the comic? And they were like, yeah, all we care about is making the movie. So you want to write the comic? Sure. But you also have to draw it. I'm like, uh, drawing comics is wonderful, but it is also maybe the hardest kind of drawing you can do. In terms of sheer labor, It is. there's more work to be done per square inch in terms of reference and refinement and drawing. It is hard, and I was kind of tapped out. Um, but they brought me back for this. So I drew a couple of issues, but I burned out fast. Um, and I, we took kind of the ideas they had had for the movie, and I kind of worked, elaborated on them for the comic series. And uh, we traded up, though, because I continued doing covers, but Leonard Kirk started drawing the comics. And he's a national treasure. He's an amazing artist. Um, and we ended up, I ended up writing three volumes of Captain Canuck, and uh, it was one of the most rewarding chapters of my career. It was the most comprehensive creative control I've had in any kind of work-for-hire situation. Um, once I phased out of drawing and became uh, just a writer, though, I started stepping into editorial, and I was commissioning artists to do backup stories. I was commissioning artists to do variant covers. We got some heavy hitters for that. And... Um, 
we started building out the line. They wanted to make a universe. I was like, I can't we just do the thing? No, no, universe. Okay. So we rolled Northgard, who's another Canadian flag hero from about a decade and a half later, and kind of came up with an angle for to reboot that character and have an interesting take that he's not just another Captain Canuck. And uh, and then we spread it into other series. Like we got Fantoma was a a public domain Golden Age character. I, I worked with Ray Fox really closely to reboot her. Freelance is a Canadian Golden Age character. Uh, had a new take on him to make him from a gorgeous race of lost immortals and, uh, and make him gay. Jim Zub and Andrew Wheeler uh, came in to write that. I was very proud of what they did with some amazing art. We kind of created this chapter verse for a minute and I was sort of creative directing the line for the first season. One of the most rewarding chapters of my career. But... Uh, yeah, that's my long answer. I guess you asked how it started, and I told you the whole thing. No, and, and, and that's perfectly fine. We have no problem. We love to hear that information and low behind the scenes thing. And now here's my question. On here, we fan casted Captain Canuck, me and my cousin. So he had his pick, I had my pick. If you had a fan cast Captain Canuck today, who would you see playing it? And would you see it animated? Would you see it live? Would you see it as a movie? Well, um, you know, streaming series? What's your take? Can I ask a follow-up question before I answer? Absolutely. Did you guys fan cast the classic Captain Canuck or the, the reboot that I, I wrote? Oh my gosh. So I went with, um, my cousin did like the classic Captain Canuck and I went with more the reboot, but we tied it both together because we figured it's a time traveling tale. So. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, ours is actually a reboot. It's technically not the same person. So our Captain Canuck was a veteran of the Afghanistan war, not a Mountie. But there was time travel in the original Captain Canuck. And I don't know if you guys saw the issues, but they're not in the collections. But in the issues, we had new classic Captain Canuck stories as backups that continued the time travel. So who knows? Maybe in a way they are the same. Day. So I really want to hear your picks, but I'll tell you mine first. Okay, so well, I, I don't put my picks on hand, but I'm you can look them up while I'm talking. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. But I'll go first. So um, I, of course, have people in mind uh, because I really wrote those characters for years and drew them many times. So my Captain Canuck fan cast is a bit obscure. You're probably going to have to Google this to know who he is. He's primarily a stunt man, but he has done some acting as well. And his name is Dan Payne. He's a Canadian stuntman. He's about six foot four, six foot five, roguishly handsome. He's not certain. He he couldn't. I met him at a con, and I was it was like I was like you're the guy. Now he's probably a little old now to play Canuck. At the time, he was like on the edge, but I think it would have still worked when I met him ten years ago. Super fit because he's a stuntman, tall and handsome. He looks like he could have some indigenous. He, could, he couldn't confirm that that was the case, but he is from northern Canada, so it's entirely possible. So, Dan Payne. Um, the, only, the two screen roles I know of is he played the daddy zombie in Cabin in the Woods, but he was covered in zombie makeup, so that wouldn't really help you know what he looks like. And I saw him... I saw him on, I didn't watch the movie, but he's in some, he's like the romantic lead in one of those Hallmark Christmas movies. Right. So those are the two acting things he's done. His primary career as a stuntman, but as a stuntman, he's in good shape and he knows how to fight. Like yes. fight choreography would come easily to him. He could rock those tonfa. So Dan Payne is my pick for Canuck. Um, for Quebec, for a reboot for Canuck, uh, Quebec, Quebec. Um, <laughs> she was actually my take on our take on Quebec, which is having Aspergers um, and being neurodivergent. I guess we don't use that term anymore, but being neurodivergent on the autism spectrum. Um, she was inspired by a character from a show called The Bridge, the original Bridge, which is uh, on the border. It's, it's a team up between a Swedish cop and a Danish cop. And the Danish cop is a blonde lady who definitely is on the spectrum. And that was my inspiration. So maybe that actress, although she's Swedish and not French, but uh, there was a show uh, that ran for a couple of seasons called Cardinal, set in Northern Ontario. And he had a French Canadian blonde sidekick. I don't think she was on the spectrum, but she was a no nonsense. She was a no nonsense uh, character and she kind of had the right look. The character was named Lise Delorme. I don't remember the actress's name, but she is francophone. I think she'd make a great Quebec. And for uh, Redcoat, um, when they rebooted Doctor Who in 2005, in the second season, he had a sidekick after, uh, uh, what's her name, Rose Tyler left, uh, named Martha Jones, played by an actress named Freema Agyaman or something like that. Anyway, that was who I saw in my head as Quebec. 
uh, you know, beautiful black lady or mixed race with a with a posh British accent, whip smart. Um, that's the main cast. Um, yeah. So his brother Michael, in my mind, was a mashup between Tom Hiddleston and Michael Fassbender. So there's no one. He was kind of both at the same time in my mind. And then Mr. Gold. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. It's not the guy who played the bad guy in the Superman reboot. Um, he's been in a million other things. Right, right. Uh, Michael something or yeah, he's the one that played the villain. Yeah, I always mix him up with Michael Rooker. He's not Michael Rooker. That's Yondu, but that actor I think would make a great Mr. Gold. Um, yeah. Those are my picks. Uh, uh, those are your picks. Are we going to do uh, our picks? Oh, here. So, Let me hear your picks. All right. So our picks, as you know, so uh, Rod went with Francois, uh, Francois Anard. That was Rod's pick. He is... Um, uh, 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 yeah, so Francois Anard, that's where he went with his pick. Uh, he's a French-Canadian actor um, that he went to be Captain Quebec. I mean, sorry, Captain Canuck, that's not, not Captain... That's not bad. I, I right? can see it. Right? And then I went with... Um, uh, a little bit more to the roots, so I gotta pull up his name here because as I said I'm terrible with names at time. So I went with, and I went with Justin Rain. So Justin Rain is from that's kind Manitoba. of a superhero name already. Yeah. So he, he's from Manitoba. He does have native in him. Um, oh, very cool. You know, so he, he, and he fits the look. He's got the jaw. He's got the physique. Uh, and he was, I think, in um, what was the movie, the Twilight series. Ah, right. okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah. You know what? I just remembered when you started talking. Um, that Dan Payne fan casting only obviously occurred after I met Dan Payne at a at a, a con in Newfoundland after I'd been writing and drawing Captain Canuck for a few years. But what I had in my head when I was first working on it, I just remembered this, was uh, another mashup. So apologies, obviously. A mashup can't act, but Adam Beach. Do you know who that actor is? He's indigenous. He um, he was a, he did a stint on Law and Order SVU. Yes. He was in that movie Wind Talkers. Yes, he was on a Canadian show called Arctic Air. Yes, yeah. Um, crossed with the default shepherd, male shepherd from Mass Effect, which actually I referenced when I showed Tom Evans Unmasked for the first couple of times. But like, if you could mash those two things up, I mean, maybe with AI now you can. But that's terrible. We don't want to go there. But that again, another mashup in mind was Adam Beach crossed with the default sort of square-jawed, military-looking uh, Commander Shepard. That was my original inspiration. Okay, so you had me already on Mass Effect because Mass Effect, I played all the games, nice. right, except for Andromeda. Uh, I've got the graphic novel at home. I'm a huge fan. I'm waiting for Mass Effect Four to come out, so I know exactly where you're going. Okay, perfect. Well. Thank you so much for your time. That oh, was an absolute pleasure. This was amazing, and I uh, wish you the best. Uh, sorry, and real quick, what are you working on right now? What do you have? Uh, I am developing a creator-owned series with Fred Kennedy, who uh, is the writer of Dead Romans. Maybe you know that, maybe you don't. Uh, we're super excited about it. Can't really say much more than that, other than it is nothing like Dead Romans, and I'm really into the subject matter. And uh, I guess my X-23 series is on stands now. The trade just came out. I did a cover run for that with writer Erica Schultz, who is over my right shoulder here. Um, super proud of those. Nice to come back to a character I did a cover run on 10 years ago and be able to do all the things that lived in my head after that and try them out. Um, but yeah, I'm on Instagram at Evil Kalman and uh, all the other social media at either Evil Kalman or I Am Kalman. Follow me, and if you want to know what I'm doing next, I'll be screaming about it and banging pots and pans over there. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure. Remember, everyone, please, go and follow and check him out. Keep in tune. Help the culture grow. This is Barry from the Iconist Podcast. Remember, this whole world was put together, and it was made by a pencil, a piece of paper, and lots of imagination. Keep on dreaming. Cheers. <laughs>